added sugar. You have no um, accountability partner. No filter mechanism. That'd be true. You have, no, you have no one that you report to. You don't have a coach that when you get out with a workout or someone pushing you out there to hold you accountable. Why? What, who, who, who are you accountable to? Why do you do that? I'm accountable to myself. And I think if orchestrated properly, and if you have a great deal of self-honesty and done a great deal of introspection, it's probably the best person to be accountable to. Uh, because only you know if you truly gave everything you had. No one else, you can fool a coach, no problem, into having sympathy for you or giving you some rest and blah, blah, blah. <sighs> But only you will know if you gave it everything. And uh, it's been a pretty good, uh, it's been a pretty good coaching athlete relationship, me, myself, and I. Today is day two in block two of the Kona preparation. And uh, so yesterday I had a really hard bike workout, run off the bike, pretty pretty good quality swim. So today's usually pretty hit and miss. Sometimes I feel decent. Other times I feel absolutely terrible. And uh, I mean, I guess it's a real testament. I've made some dietary changes over the last little while. I've been eating a lot better, a lot cleaner, a lot of more fruits and vegetables, lots of colorful fruits and vegetables with lots of antioxidants and that sort of thing. And finding my recovery's been pretty good. So usually the telltale sign is to swim. So today I went to the pool with basically the intention of doing an active recovery kind of swim. But it felt pretty good, so I was able to get it up, you know, half decent intensity, I swim 4,200 meters. I'm do a nice little easy, technical little bike ride. Basically, one of my big lessons I learned in Kona was I'm a pathetic bike rider. I can push power, and that's good. Definitely want to do that, but you also need to be able to handle your bike. And so, and, and, and not only there, in Oceanside, last time I met Jan, he definitely put a lot of time into me in the technical sections of the race. So, that will be the last time people will put time into me in the technical sections of the race. So, now I do all my easy rides, I just go ride around on a walking path, and it's quite, uh, it's quite technical, it's a little narrow thing, people, children, dogs, baby carriages, Lots of stuff to avoid amidst the technical, and I try to do as many of the corners as I can in the time trial position too. So um, I know I'm starting to improve because Erin came for a ride the other day and said she cringed because I went around a couple corners so fast. So.
in running, it's very important that you, you become one with yourself, one with the environment, you listen to the body, because those are all things that you're going to call upon when the going gets tough, especially in Kona and like absolutely ridiculous heat and humidity and with stiff competition. So um, for the most part, I run off feel. I don't really even look at the watch. Just a couple times just to, for the most part, make sure I'm not running too fast. So, um, and that's what I did do on the first two, two loops. I sort of controlled myself a bit. That way I could descend all three of them. So that's the name of the game. I don't really... Um, I don't really kill myself too often in, in the sense of, you know, applying things to myself. I just kind of get out there and get the work done. And usually, fortunately, this is how you see how you're wired. In my, my case, uh, usually I have to sort of reel myself in a little bit as opposed to kick myself in the ass. Uh, Aaron asked me after the workout, did you have four more seconds in you to go sub 930? And I said, well, if Jan Ferdino was here, probably. So... Uh, you always, you oh, you probably always have more with the right circumstances. So you know you don't want to get in the habit of taking yourself to to those places too often. It's good to exercise the muscle every now and then, uh, but for the most part, how you get yourself in great shape is just day in and day out doing quality work, not these heroic kind of efforts. They're good to do every now and then because you may need to do a heroic effort. But you certainly don't want to do a heroic effort every single practice, every single day. How you doing? Well, see, it's a little overcast out there. I'm hoping to go play nine holes of golf again. I log it as my swim training, second portion of my swim training, because I find the two to be so related. <clears throat> and every time I step out to the tee, it's really the gun's about to go in a race and I got to get the right setup, right timing, right mindset, right focus and well at the uh, if you play nine holes of golf I basically get to hear nine start guns so just as many guns as I'll hear throughout the year I'll do about nine races a year. We're right, at the part of the day where the gun's about to go in Kona everyone's heart's beating at 100 beats well 200 beats per minute and you're forced to not crumble under pressure every single time you step up to the ball. So that's why we come to the golf course to work on that. Oh God, <laughs> you kidding me? How does that? Two of those now. The birdie over there was that too. Does that reflect on Kona last year? That is that is a great analogy right there. That is that's what that's what right there. <laughs> Bogey. You Never bogey. felt worse. You bogeyed the run course. Bogey the run course. No, I was like triple bogey on the run course. 